Man, have you ever been taking a test and you just know it's just not going really well for you? <laughs> that when you turn your paper in, that uh, you're going to get a big fat F on the test. Maybe that's never happened to you, but there have been times in my life when I knew I was not prepared for the test that I had to take. And man, I would be sweating bullets. I would be worried. I would be struggling. I would wish that I had prepared better for the testing time that came. You know, in life, that's how life is. Sometimes God will send us tests along the way. Sometimes we have to go through trials. Sometimes we have to go through tribulations or, or moments where we're being tested. And when the test comes, I want you to know when those trials comes, when those tribulations come, it's only a test. And God wants us to pass with flying colors. And certainly as a young person, um, whether you are a first grader or a third grader or a fifth grader, a high school student, middle school student, it doesn't matter. An adult, we all go through different testing times and testing seasons. And God does not test us because he wants us to fail, but God tests us because he wants us to come through with flying colors, if you will. He wants to have us come through and have our faith come through as pure gold. But you and I will never know the level of our faith, if our faith is never tested. You'll never know how much you can handle if you never have to handle anything. You'll never know what you can accomplish if you don't have to go through anything. And so God being a great father that he is and uh, being a great developer of people, God sometimes puts us through tests and trials and tribulations to one, show us where we are, two, to show us where we need to be and what we need to do in order to get there. So I want to encourage you today in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 in verse 3 through 9, it talks about um, the purpose of God's testings in our life, the purpose of times of testing that come our way and what God's plan is for you after the test. He does not want to see you fail. In fact, he doesn't necessarily want to see you struggling. He wants to see you come through as pure gold. Let me read 1 Peter chapter uh, number 1 and verse 3 through 9 into your hearing. And then we'll talk about it. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And, does, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Verse six again says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. When God allows us to go through times of testing and times of trial, he says in his word there in verse six, it can cause us to go through a season of grieving. It can go through a season of mourning, a season of heaviness or bitterness. Um, it's, it's not uncommon for us to go through trials. In fact, all of us will go through a trial. Jesus, in fact, said, that it rains on the just as well 
as the unjust. So no matter how righteous we live, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we study our Bibles, no matter how much we serve in God's kingdom, we're still all going to be subject to times of testing and trials. And here in verse six, he even says that our reaction to those testing seasons may be that we are grieved, we're heavy, we're feeling burdened and suffering. Have you ever gone through a season where you feel like that? I want you to think back to a time, maybe it was in school, maybe it was a literal test that you had to take in science or math or history or sociology, and you just weren't prepared for the test. Do you remember how you felt? Or even if you were prepared, just the stress of having to get a good grade in order to pass a class or get a good grade in order to set yourself up for going to the next level or going into college or getting a scholarship. Those can be testing times. Or maybe it was a test that you were going through with one of your friends or in a relationship where your, your, your character, your integrity, your faithfulness uh, was being tested. Or maybe your family has been going through a season of testing. Maybe somebody had been sick or there's a trial that's going on in the house and uh, you're trying to hold it down at school. You're trying to do what you need to do academically, maybe athletically, but just in your family, there's, there's some turmoil, there's some trials and some tribulations. All of these things can cause us to be grieved, can cause us to be burdened, can cause us to go through uh, a season of, of grieving. And, and I want you to know that's normal. That is a part of life. And if we're not careful in the, in the media age in which we live in, we will think everybody wakes up with a smile on their face in their best glamour shot and living their best life. If you're not careful as you're scrolling through Instagram or you're scrolling through Twitter or whatever social media platform, Facebook, whatever you're using, people will be on there taking pictures, taking selfies. And man, they look like they're on the beach every day. They look like they're driving a drop top. They're on a motorcycle. They're in the mountains. They're on the beach. They're doing all of this beautiful, wonderful stuff. And if you're not careful, you can see that day after day after day. And then look at your own life. Look at your own situation and conclude, my life looks nothing like that. <laughs> my life looks nothing like a glamour shot right now. Well, you got to be careful because some of those are not real. I'm not saying the pictures are not real, but that's not reality. Every day is not going to look like that. Every day we live is not going to be lived in living our best life. Sometimes we will have to go through trials. Sometimes we will have to go through trouble. Sometimes we're going to have to go through tribulation. And I want you to take a moment as we're going through this teaching. I'm going to teach you some principles about how to deal with your times of testing. But I want to take a moment and have you sit down and maybe uh, describe a time when you were feeling tested. Maybe you were tested spiritually or tested physically or tested emotionally. Uh, and I want you to describe the situation. What were you going through? Where were you? When was it? What was the situation and circumstance? And then I want you to, to list out and write down, how did you feel? Were you anxious? Were you nervous? Were you frustrated? Were you filled with fear? Um, were you, did you feel alone? Did you feel helpless, hopeless? How did you feel when the time of testing came? Maybe you felt uh, ready to receive it. Maybe you felt prepared, confident. I know I can handle this. It's gonna be tough, but I'm prepared. I put the work in, I, I worked hard, and now my hard work is gonna pay off. I want you to write down how how did you feel? And then, and then what did you learn from that situation? The next test that's going to come, what did you learn from the last test? Uh, I used to love one of my teachers in grade school, Mrs. Crowder. She was my second grade teacher. And she, she helped me to understand this concept of grace. Uh, she would often give us a quiz or give us a test. And she would give it to us uh, on, on like Wednesday in the middle of the week. And she would tell us this, she would say, listen, if you did not like your grade on the test or how you performed, she said, I'll give you an opportunity to do it again on Friday. She said, if you liked your grade and you're satisfied with it, you can keep the grade from Wednesday. But if you didn't perform as well as you should, she says, I'll give you a chance to make it up and do it again on Friday. And it would be a different test. It would be over the same material. It would be a different test, but she would give us a chance to get it right. And what I learned is, even if I made mistakes on Wednesday, my teacher gave me a chance by her grace to make some adjustments in my study habits, to go back and review what I wasn't really good at. So when the test came back on Friday, I ensured I had a better grade. Now listen, if you get a bad grade on Wednesday 
and then your teacher gives you an opportunity to do it again. You get that same bad grade on Friday. <laughs> it's not something wrong with the teacher. It's something wrong with the student. So I want you to know that even though you may not have done well in the last trial or you may not be doing well in this trial, God is a God of grace. He gives us another opportunity to get it right. So I want you to talk about the testing that you've been through. I want you to reflect on that, meditate on that. And then I'm going to come back and tell you how you can make sure that you pass the next test or that you go through the next trial and come out with flying colors, come out with an A on your exam. I'll be right back.
Hey man, well hopefully you had a chance to review the last trial or the last test or the last um, situation you went through that really uh, gave you some anxiety or gave you some fear or gave you some worry. Or like I said, maybe you were confident in going through it. And I wanna help you understand how you can approach each test that, that comes your way, each trial that comes your way to make sure you come through it with flying colors. The first thing you have to do is understand the purpose of the test that comes in your life and mine. Here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9, the Word of God helps us to understand why tests come our way, why we have to go through the trial and the troubles that we do. Here's what he says in verse 5. He says, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Amen. He says that in verse nine, we are receiving the end of our faith, the salvation of our souls. He says that uh, when you and I go through times of testing and times of trial, it's so that when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, when we get to the end of this life in the flesh, we will come through, he says, and we will, we will be revealed. Our faith will be revealed in the end times. God says that when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin, we then start a journey of discipleship. We start a journey of growing and developing in God. God wants to see us go from one level of faith to another level of faith, from one level of glory in him to another level of glory in him. Our faith ought not be static. It ought not stay stuck. It ought not just stay in one place. We ought to be growing in grace and growing in faith. That's why he tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. The more word you hear, the more faith you will have. The more word you study, the more your faith will be built up. In fact, Jesus said, if you had the faith, the size of a mustard seed, you and I could move mountains, which means there are different sizes of faith in the kingdom of God. And if you're at a place now where you're saying, Pastor, I, I just have a little bit of faith, that's okay, because you can do a lot with just a little bit of faith. But God doesn't want you to stay in a place of having little faith. No, no, no. He wants your faith to grow over time. He wants you to grow even as your body is growing. You're not the same size now as you were when you were a baby. You're not the same size now as you were when you were a first grader. You're not the same size now as you were when you were getting ready to go into middle school. And you certainly hopefully won't be the same size when you graduate from high school. Why? Because you are in a growth process. And just like your frame is growing in the natural, God wants your faith to grow in the spiritual. So that when the last day comes, when, when this life is over, whatever time it ends for us in this body, God then wants our faith to be revealed unto salvation at the end times. That's the purpose of the trial, the purpose of the test, the purpose of the tribulation is to grow us in our faith. Because in order to make it through um, friends talking about us, in order to make it through stressful situations at school, in order for us to make it through trouble in our home or trouble in different places, um, it requires faith. And that faith grows when we're in a trial. That faith is revealed by how we handle the trials that we go through. But here's the second thing that helps us to understand how to go through our test. It's only a test, but you got to understand the purpose of the test. But secondly, you got to understand the process of the test. Watch what he says again in verse seven. He says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? He makes the comparison of our faith to a precious metal or a precious stone or valuable stone that has been tried in the fire. He says that's what our faith is like. You know, when they're trying to, to, to evaluate gold or silver or some precious metal, they don't just do it based on how it looks. You know, if you go to the mall or you go online and you buy a gold chain or a silver chain, um, it can look good, it can be shiny, but that doesn't mean it's valuable. The way a jeweler determines whether a, a piece of jewelry is valuable or not, or how much value it has, is by how pure the metal is. Because some pieces of gold can look pure, but be mixed with a lot of impurities. 
Some silver chains can look good on the outside, but in reality, up close, it's mixed with a lot of impurities that are not really valuable silver at all. So what a, a, a blacksmith will do or what a jeweler will do is they will take that metal, they will take that precious jewelry and they will put it in a furnace and they will turn the heat up on that metal. They will turn the heat up in that furnace until it melts the metal and it melts away all of the impurities. It's called dross. And when, or, and, and when they would melt that metal down, they were then able to separate the impure metal from the pure. And then they would keep the pure metal and they would, they would then give it its value based on how much uh, purity was there and how little impurities are there. That's what God does when he takes us through a trial. That's why things can feel hot. <laughs> they can feel heated. You can feel the pressure. You can feel like um, you're under pressure. You're under fire, we even say. Why? Because God is testing our faith. He's trying to separate what looks like faith from what's real faith. You know, because everybody can talk a good game. Oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't lean to my own understanding. In all of my ways, I acknowledge him and I know he'll direct my path. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It's good to say that. But is that what we really do when we're in the midst of the trial? Is that what we really believe? when we're in the midst of what we're going through. And that's why God sends the trial. That's why God allows the trial to come so he can burn away all of that stuff that's not pure. And so that what we're left with is true faith. Can you remember the last time you went through something and maybe you thought you were praying before the trial, but once you got in it, you really started praying to God. Or maybe you went through something and you kind of read your Bible when you came to church, but when you got into that difficulty and you were trying to find some direction, you didn't wait for your Sunday school teacher or pastor or even your mom and dad to tell you to read the Bible. You went to the word yourself to try to find some comfort and some direction. That's real faith. That's pure faith. Have you ever went through something and you started to really develop your relationship with God? Not your moms, not your grandmothers, not your grandfathers, not somebody else's faith, but you started getting closer to God yourself. That's because when that trial comes, that fire comes, God is trying to push away the impurities and he's trying to get you to a pure relationship, a rich, real, and refreshing relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. The purpose is so that our faith can come through as pure gold. The process is sometimes we have to go through the fire in order to be tested, in order to separate the pure from the impure. And then the last thing is our praise. What should we do while we're in the process? What should we do while we're going through our trial? Well, over and over again, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9, we hear the words, praise be unto the God. Um, blessed be the God of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about uh, rejoice greatly in verse number 6. He talks about it again um, in verse number 7, that the praise, honor, and glory of the Lord, of, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you see that all throughout that scripture? It talks about praise and glory and honor, that that's how we ought to go through our trial. Don't let what you're experiencing determine what your expression is. What I'm experiencing is one thing, but what I express can be something totally different. But what I'm experiencing may be hard, but what I'm expressing may be a hallelujah. What I'm experiencing is I'm going through, but what I can express is glory to God. What I'm experiencing is pressure and maybe even some pain, but what I can express is praise to our God, because we know that this is only a test. Young, young person, young boy, young, young girl, young man, young woman, I want you to know that whatever you're facing right now, whatever trial you're going through, whatever tribulation you're going through, whatever test you're going through, it's just that. It's just a test. And just like my second grade teacher, God will give you another chance to get a better grade on the next test. If you keep in mind, the purpose of the test, the process in the test, and your praise while you go through the test, you'll be able to come out on the other side as pure gold. Remember, I love you. I'm praying for you again. I'm looking forward to being back in church with you. But until then, um, Lady Camille and I love you very much. I look forward to seeing you. Be victorious. God bless you.